Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is autism spectrum disorder? This is a severe developmental disorder, and with it we see deficits in communication and social interaction abilities. We also have stereotype repetitive behaviors that are observed, and an individual with this disorder has restricted interest in the environment and other people. What kind of symptoms do we see with this disorder? Right, so with autism spectrum disorder, as I mentioned, you're going to see persistent deficits with communication, social communication, and you'll see the same thing with social interaction. And you also see restrictive, repetitive patterns of behaviors, interests, or activities. And this can be stereotyped repetitive motor movements, ritualized patterns of verbal behavior, nonverbal behavior. There can be an increased or decreased reactivity to sensory input and an unusual interest in sensory aspects of their environment. With this disorder, symptoms must be present in the early developmental period, and the symptoms must cause significant impairment in social, occupational, or other areas of functioning. How many people have autism spectrum disorder, and when do they usually get it? So the prevalence of autism spectrum disorder is about 1% of the population. And males are four times more likely to develop this disorder than females. The symptoms of autism spectrum disorder are usually recognized around age two. Severe symptoms can be identified around a year, and usually mild symptoms identified around two years. What are the causes of um, autism spectrum disorder? In terms of the causes of autism spectrum disorder, we're really not sure, but we do believe there is a strong genetic component. And we're fairly confident of that, to the degree we believe there's no postnatal cause, but that's very unlikely, that it's probably a prenatal cause. There's also a known genetic mutation that we see in as many as 15% of the cases. So there is a lot of evidence around this genetic contribution. There are other factors that we believe may contribute to the development of the disorder, including low birth weight and advanced parental age. What kind of advice would you give someone with autism spectrum disorder or their family? So when considering treatment for autism spectrum disorder, I would say consult your pediatrician and mental health care provider and see what resources they recommend. Our understanding of this disorder has increased and our awareness has increased recently and we hope that this is going to lead to the availability of more resources in the community.